Hi guys, Andre from Conveyor Randomness here, and today I'll be looking at Limb Fusion on the M1 Mac. With the exciting announcement and subsequent positive reviews and benchmark tests on Apple's new M1 chip in their latest lineup of low-end Macs and the latest update to the Apple operating system Big Sur, as well as its ability to allow the user to use certain iOS and iPad OS apps, it's definitely an exciting period to be a Mac user. This M1 Mac Mini is my first venture into Apple desktop hardware, having previously only ever experienced Windows PCs and primarily coming from an iPad Pro to do all my video editing in LumiFusion. It was very encouraging to see that I'd be able to use LumiFusion on a Mac. So in an effort to see what the experience is like using LumiFusion on a Mac, compared to using it in its natural habitat on an iPad, I will be editing the same video, which was in fact the video I released last week on the channel, with the same edits simultaneously done on both a Mac Mini and an iPad Pro. Stay tuned to the end and I'll show you the rendering race of the video on LumiFusion between the iPad and the Mac Mini. Let's get over to the edit. Adding video or audio files to the timeline from your selected media was the same as you would expect from your iPad, providing those files are in easily accessible locations. Your experience is not going to change even if you're splitting the timeline because you're going to get the exact same process as you get when you're using the iPad. Playback of the timeline resulted in no skip frames, meaning playback was always smooth. Going into the editing section of each clip is always just a click away, as it was always just a tap away on the iPad. Some people may find using a mouse in LumiFusion a little bit fiddly compared to using functions that can normally be done by hand on the iPad, but the experience is no different compared to using a mouse on any other computer-based editing program. Making those micro changes to individual clips, whether it be changing the speed of a clip, moving the position of an audio file, or even altering the configuration of that audio file are all straightforward. Thankfully, there's no change in the transitions that are available to you using it on the Mac. The ability to use and remove a green screen is now simple. In the first few weeks of using LumiFusion on the Mac, this would cause the program to crash, but as you can see, it now breezes straight through the edit. Scrolling through the timeline can be a bit laboured compared to the ease and quickness of hand scrolling on the iPad. With zooming in on the timeline, the iPad allows for a customised position for pinch to zoom, but on the Mac it allows for a three point zoom, extreme out, in and a mid range zoom. Moving clips is as straightforward with the mouse as it is with the Apple Pencil or the fingers. Multi-selecting clips is straightforward too, making use of that recently added LumaFusion feature. The only error I've encountered so far that hasn't been corrected in an update is, when taking a snapshot, LumaFusion would crash unexpectedly and exit. Thankfully, when the program restarts, none of my edits have been lost. Hopefully that's an edit that is corrected in a future update. After a few more edits and some pictures for panning shots added to the timeline, I'm ready to begin rendering the 3 minute 55 second video on both devices. All conditions and export settings for both videos are identical to allow for fair testing. And now we can begin the race. At just over three minutes into the render and the Mac Mini is about halfway through while the iPad isn't too far behind. The Mac Mini finishes with a render in six minutes and 23 seconds. while the iPad finishes a minute and 15 seconds later at 7 minutes and 39 seconds. So that's LumaFusion on the M1 Mac. When you're using it, if you treat it like the touchscreen based app that it is, but just replace the Apple Pencil or your finger with your mouse pointer, then you'll find the experience almost the same. I can do everything in LumaFusion without using a keyboard, just like doing it on an iPad. 
As you can see from my examples in this video, you can still easily scroll and edit the timeline, select and import media, and edit clips in the same way that you can on an iPad or an iPhone. The developers have done a really good job in integrating LumaFusion onto the Mac so soon after the M1 transition. Yes, there are still a few bugs in the system that may cause LumaFusion to crash, but just like LumaTouch's updates following the integration, they are addressing these issues to get to a point where you'll get a seamless experience no matter which system you use on it. I can see myself beginning an edit on the iPad, then exporting the LumaFusion project package, airdropping the project over to my Mac Mini, and continuing the editing process there. To be honest, why spend loads on those expensive video editing programs when you can use LumaFusion on your Mac if you've already purchased the app on your iPhone or iPad? It's definitely going to be an exciting transition period to see what Apple does next with the M chips in their more powerful hardware, if this is what the baseline M1 chips can do. If you'd like to see me test more iOS apps that are compatible with macOS, just let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. That's all for me today. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Why don't you click one of the two videos below before the time runs out? Three, two, one.